have a look at analyzing, making an FEA analysis of this simple high par. I'll just rotate that uh, high par around with the orbit tool so we can see the basic shape of it. And of course it's defined by fixed points which are the nodes of a, a 3D poly and by a mesh and has been produced by M-Panel. With M-Panel FEA, M-Panel FEA is designed to work easily with M-Panel models. The first thing that we do on M-Panel FEA is we'd set up the name of the file, I'll say new model file, that we're going to uh, use. And here I'll, I'll just say um, FEA demo. The second thing we do is we set up the units that the, that the analysis is going to be done in. And we need to be careful that the uh, units that, the, that, the, that we're using in here, meters or millimeters or inches, are the same as the units that the drawing was done in. If I just quickly put a dimension onto this edge here, you can see this is about 4.5, that is in meters, and so we will work in kilograms force and meters. Uh, it would be more correct to work in kilonewtons and meters, but many engineers think in kilograms force. We could write a description in here of what this uh, FEA analysis was about, that's purely optional. We then go on and build the model for the FEA and we can leave all these settings as, as they are as the default settings for a simple model like this and just say make the model. And when we make the model we get a build report and we will we'll use this to check a couple of things. Um, a region is an area of the mesh which is separate from any other area. In other words, uh, that, it's, that, it, uh, that, it, that there is no fixed boundary between different parts of the mesh. And here we just have a single mesh um, which has no fixed boundaries, so we would expect one region. The second thing is the bandwidth. The bandwidth is a, uh, a sort of a mathematical figure and bigger models with more complication will have a higher bandwidth um, with too high a bandwidth, the M-Panel FEA becomes very slow in solving. Bandwidths below 100 are absolutely fine. Bandwidths between 100 and 200 are kind of acceptable. Over 200, we probably need to look at simplifying the model before we do an analysis. But this is, uh, this is absolutely, absolutely okay. Um, we'll come back in a minute to the materials and the pre-stress. I just want to draw out quickly a check model showing what the FEA has actually converted this model, this model into. And I'll specify a point to draw out the FEA model of the membrane. And I'll choose the point to be just here. And then and you can see that the FEA model has broken the membrane down into little triangular cells and in fact the FEA analysis using M-Panel is all based on, on triangular cells. In the same place we'll draw out uh, the cables and the cables will either be drawn out in cyan like this or in magenta. If they're in cyan then the program has been able to make a reasonable estimation of the initial tension in those cables. If they're drawn out in magenta, then we have to enter a value for the initial. So, so we're, we're looking, hopefully, to get all cyan cables in the model. And we'll just plot out the restraints. The restraints show us these little uh, red circles. And that's a ni nice, simple model. We can just make. We, we're just making sure that we understand what the, what is happening in the modeling there. The model, when it's built in, if I go now to the materials, 
is made initially with whatever our default values are for the materials and here we've got a generic type 1 material typical sort of values and a generic 8 millimeter cable the, you can uh, select different materials from the materials library and when MPAN FEA is sent out it will contain a generic type 1, a generic type 2 and a generic shade cloth that is all of all of the items in there which have stars by them you can also add your own materials in this case uh, we've added Ferrari 502 um, and we, we can help you with adding those uh, those materials to the database you can also say which one of those materials you want to use as the default and if you wanted to change it you would just for instance uh, choose um, this this element here and then you would say use this material from the database or use that material from the database and and it would be changed in the table the free stress is the amount of stress put into the fabric lineal stress that is in kilograms force per meter in the uh, local X and local Y directions and this is one of the biggest things that you have to decide as a designer is how much pre-stress you want to put in to the to the uh, material with higher pre-stress the structure will deflect less under load it'll behave better in in wind however it'll be harder to install and uh, possibly may give higher forces on the uh, on the corner points and so for that reason we uh, we all we have a default value in M panel FEA which is always rather on the high side it's a higher value than most people would use you could use this value but it's higher value than normal practice and so we we expect you as the designer to reduce these figures down to a value which suits your particular application and these might be reduced down to perhaps um, 100 instead of 400 uh, kilograms force per meter. Once we change those, we, the, in, the initial cable tensions will also change and so we can recalc the initial cable tensions and we can see here now that the initial cable tensions have reduced down to the 5600 um, region and just a quick explanation of this line that says all this this just refers to all of the cables which haven't been specifically identified down here and we've got four cables down here each cable is built up from links and if I go back to the check model and draw out the cable numbers and I'll put these off just slightly on the right so I'll put the cable numbers out just here and we can see on these cables that for instance the cable on this edge is built up out of links numbered from 25 through to 36 and in the table of the cables links 25 through 36 identify this one cable so and 25 through 36 is being assigned an initial tension of 477 kilograms that's the uh, that's the M panel FEA's estimation of what the initial conditions will be there in that cable we could from this point we could solve for load case zero and load case zero is a slightly odd, slightly mathematical um, construct. It's the uh, load case in which no external forces are applied and by convention the fabric weight and the cable weights are ignored as well. And this gives a good starting point because the effect of fabric weight and cable weight on the structure is usually negligible. So we've got free stress only load case zero, run the solver, oh we've made some changes, you always need to save the changes, any changes that you've made before you uh, run the solver, 
Now we can run the solver and we'll receive a progress graph like this and this is the amount of residual um, the unbalanced forces in the uh, in the model and we want that residual to come down to a low value like e to the minus 6 i below this yellow line so that we know that the solution is valid with a good valid solution like that we can save the results and we can look at plotting out some results now for load case 0 load case 0 and the first result that I would always um, plot out just for good drawing organization is I would plot out a title block to specify that the drawings that I'm about to draw are from load case 0 and we'll specify the point for that so we're doing the load case title block at a specified point specify it just there and we get a, a title block of load case 0. Probably the, what the, one of the next things that we'd want to look at is to look at the actual membrane stress. We specified a membrane stress across the structure. Um, our first guess, our estimation, was that it was going to be 100 kilograms force per meter. And we'll, we'll now look at what the program has worked out the, what it thinks the actual membrane stress is and we'll plot this off just slightly to the right offset right from this from this plot here and here we can see the membrane uh, stresses which in this case um, it, whereas we've said that we wanted them to be round about a hundred they're actually varying slightly with with a higher level on the uh, the diagonal here of about 127 we would look perhaps at the um, cable tensions and plot those out and we have cable tensions which are going up to about 600 kilograms force on the on the highest uh, edge there on the highest tension cable. And we would also perhaps look at the uh, reactions, that's the forces on the corners. And on the forces on the corners we may well want real numbers, so we would both plot and write the data out. And with this we get a small colour-coded line showing us the direction, and this is actually the direction in 3D, of the reaction. The reaction is always in the opposite direction to the force. So the force on this, the reaction is like this, the force on this uh, on this pole, pole top is like this, and the value of the force there is 805 kilograms force. We would perhaps set up some load conditions, and for load we could um, look at uh, di different amounts of pressure due to wind, different amounts of effective uh, pressure due to either the uh, weight of the fabric or to snow. And the, the values that we need to put in here, ideally you would obtain from your local building codes, or from your local building inspector or from the certifying authority that's going to uh, certify that this structure is, is designed correctly. But we have some very um, approximate loads that we can apply. So for instance we can enter a membrane load for generic snow of about one meter depth. And we'll insert that on line one and this gives us a snow load of 100 kilograms force per square meter applied over the whole structure. Save those changes. This is for load case 1. We have up to 12 load cases. And we can now solve for load case 1. And 
typically during the solution for load case 1 you can see that the solution takes a little bit longer to actually start solving now and the and the take and the taking longer to achieve a uh, to achieve a good result with the residual down below e to the minus 6 with a loaded situation is quite common and in fact on some models it may be uh, in some load conditions it may be quite a struggle to get the uh, to get the residual down down to a low enough figure but this is entirely acceptable we have a warning z and we can look that up in the help file and that's a warning that some of the fabric has gone to zero stress in at least one direction and that you know, putting it into plain english that means that some of the fabric is wrinkled we can save the results there and now we can look at plotting out um, load case 1 in the results so we'll put in a load case title block and we'll create a new point to start this run off with and we'll put it in just here that gives load case 1 and summarizes what the actual loads are and then offsetting to the right again um, probably one of the first things we'd want to look at is the displaced shape and the display shape is drawn out in green as the original shape and white as the new display shape so that if we um, just select this uh, this displace plot and orbit it around we can see the effect of the snow loading in pushing the membrane down in the middle We would then perhaps um, look at the, well, let's look at the cable tensions. And here we'll see that the cable tensions now have increased to where they're highest on the high poles. And the cable tensions have increased to 1900 kilograms force. We could also look at the reactions again we'll plot and write the data and of course the, the corners which have the highest cable tensions which were the snow loading will be the high poles now we'll have the highest reactions and the highest reaction there is up to um, 3188 kilograms force so that shows the basics of how to analyze a, uh, a simple high par and shows uh, getting the results out onto the screen with the with the uh, tensions in the cables the reactions in the corners four different loading conditions it may be that you need to um, output the results in a in a text form and those results are available on the raw data tab so that for instance if we asked for the results for load case 1 which was the uh, loaded case just now and we asked for the um, reactions we would obtain here the reactions on the four nodes uh, which were the four fixed points in the structure and the reactions are in X Y and Z so these are the actual uh, actual reactions reactions of course remember always exactly opposite in direction to the forces